the recording. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's class. Um, oh my God, the name of it is <laughs> Selling 90 Plus Homes, Working Four Days a Week. Now, Alicia Fickert is an amazing agent, and all of her accolades just scream success. So, um, Alicia is. Sorry, Alicia, that I'm. You're all good. I, I was too busy chatting and and having fun. Yeah. So Alicia, she's been uh, with Keller Williams for. Um, she's been selling real estate since 2007, and she has been in Gary Keller's Top 100 Mastermind since 2020. For the last three years, she's been a speaker on the family reunion stage, and. Um, uh, let's see, she is also a certified One Thing Ambassador. Did I miss anything there, Alicia? And I'm the new director of KW Wellness. And the new director of KW Wellness. So we really have an amazing person here who's going to share with us. So what makes a um, an online Zoom session more intriguing and more in-depth is when we can share our faces on screen. So if you're able to share, um, to turn on your camera and share your face, that would really add to the energy. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, Jeremy. I love it. All right, everybody, please join me in welcoming Alicia Fickert. Thank you so much, Edith, for having me. I'm so excited to be here. And so, yes, I love seeing faces. This is going to be a very interactive conversation, a mastermind. The, I have found that the more I do this is that we get a lot more out of this as a group when there's more participation, more people asking questions and getting involved. So I don't bite. You can interrupt me. You can put something in the chat if you have dogs or something barking in the background, and that's fine too. I just want to make sure you get the most out of it. So I'm going to share my screen with you guys. Can everyone see my screen? All right, perfect. Okay, so I, again, I'm excited because I want to, I love talking about working less and selling a lot of properties, whatever that number is. So last year I worked 162 days. And the reason I say that is because I believe that everyone can. And whatever that number is that you're wanting to hit, that goal of success, I believe you can make that goal. So I know the class is called How to Sell 90 Plus Properties and Only Work Four Days a Week, but maybe for you, it's how do I sell 50 properties and work, maybe it's three days a week or five days a week. Some of us are working six or seven days a week. Maybe it's just scaling down to six days a week, or maybe it's, I'm gonna leave work every day at two. Whatever that means to you, I want you to see that as the title of this class because I want you guys to be aware of that you don't have to work longer hours and you don't have to work 24 seven in order to be successful. I've heard so many agents tell me that they've worked themselves to death and, they, and they're burnt out because they felt like the only way they could be successful is if they work more. Because our industry, I feel like, there's not a ton of great examples out there of people showing us constantly that you don't have to work 24 seven. What is, and I would love for you guys to unmute yourself and just shout out, what is some of the common things we hear in real estate that are like the expectations or the things on a new agent that you have to do to be successful? Uh, have to work every weekend. Okay, have to work every weekend. That is definitely one of them. Feel free to popcorn in or put it in the chat, everyone. Cold calling. Hear... Oh, go ahead. It's a cold calling door knocking. Oh, to be successful, you have the cold call or door knock. Yep, I've heard that one. Thank you. I've heard as a new agent, oh, someone just wrote that, rise and grind. Yeah, I've heard... A lot of times, oh, it's a new agent. I have to take these calls, even if it's eight o'clock at night and with my family, and I have to constantly be re responding to people because if I don't, then I'm not going to be successful. 
farm. Someone said farm. Yep, if you don't farm. But here's the thing. You guys got to design your life. Life by design is taught so much in Keller Williams. And yet I find that even as an agent, I joined in 2015 Keller Williams. I wasn't running my business like a business. And I heard, you know, life by design. I'm like, okay, that's great. That's great. She did a great job on creating her life. I didn't really fully believe you could until certain things started happening in my life. And then I'm like, no, no, like there's got to be a better way. So that's just my little feel. I love to just talk about, as you can see, the passion is coming out. I love talking about people's goals. I love talking about how you can find ways of working smarter and not harder. So what we're going to be talking about today is mindset. Gary Keller always starts with mindset. If you've ever been to his masterminds, if you ever, you know, even at family reunion or maybe camp, he always talks about mindset. Then we're going to talk about the seven circles, which is basically one big giant circles with seven areas of your life, which if anyone has not read the one thing book, Gary and Jay do a great job of explaining this. And I'm going to walk you guys through this exercise that will help enlighten you guys about the different areas and what it looks like. We're going to go over leverage, priorities, time blocking, and ways to be consistent. So the benefits of this class is you're going to, you're going to break through what's holding you back. What's that mindset? What's that story that you're going to be telling you, telling yourself constantly that we're going to break through? Then we're going to get clarity on what's missing, the missing leverage in both professional and personal, because I believe you have to have both sides of leverage in order to be successful and not to have burnt out, like burnout. Like if you're, you can have a lot of leverage on one side and you can still get burnout and to consistently time and block the priorities and the habits that are most important to you. So that's what we're going to be going over. And Gary says to change your life, you have to change your identity to be your future self. You have to believe you are already that person. So again, we're, we're starting off with mindset. Gary is saying, okay, Alicia, what's that 2030 version of Alicia? What does that look like? If I don't know, then I, I'm, I can't hit that. I can't start acting in priority. I can't start acting like that future self. So if you figure out what is that future self that you want to be, you want to become, then you have to start acting like it. You have to start showing up every day and being that person. Because if you do, you will then be that person so much faster. And you're already believing it. Because if you're saying, mm, I'm not going to be that, I'm not that future person because I haven't accomplished or I'll be happy when, I'll be that person when, if you're, if you're saying that to yourself, you're holding yourself back. So with mindset, I believe mindset affects every area of your life, it affects your attitude, affects your behaviors, which leads to your actions. And then you sabotage your own success. And it also sabotages your relationships. So if your mindset is a powerful tool, how can you use it to help you succeed? And how do you know if you're self-sabotaging yourself? Like, how, how do you, how do you know you're doing that? Because there's so many times that you've created these stories that you tell yourself that you don't even know you're telling yourself these stories. So I, I want to share a story that I have that goes back way too far, back to my childhood. And it is about being smart. My family, both of my parents were not, they did not go to college. However, they're, they're successful. They own three businesses. They're, they are street smart is what they've always called themselves. So I was told my whole life, you are street smart. You're going to do great in life. I mean, they were trying to give me like positive affirmations. They were doing the best they could with what they believed. And that's what they believed. Then they would turn and say, we're not book smart. Like my best friend was book smart. She can ace the test, you know, read through a whole book in, in, in a day or two. And, and she was doing great. So they always constantly said, she's book smart. You're street smart. You're going to get by. So they're trying to encourage me. Well, that was great. And if the, 
if the thought constantly is in my head saying, I'm not smart. I grew up my whole life thinking, I'm not smart. I'm not smart. I'm not smart. I'm street smart. I'm going to get by. So yeah, I was, I was street smart. I was going to get by. Well, there was another component in there. I also had dyslexia, which I didn't know until my husband told me I should be married for about three years. So right around 26 years old, I found out I, was, I had dyslexic. I just thought that I wasn't smart because I, I didn't enjoy and I couldn't read very easily. And it didn't make sense. The words dance on the page, the words, you know, like mixed and they would change. And, and it, it, was, it was a real challenge. However, if I stopped and challenged my story, I was telling myself that my parents told me that then I, then I took and go, yep, that's mine. I'm owning it. And then I stored it in there. And then I tell myself, myself, I'm not smart. I'm, I'm street smart. So I'll be just fine, but I'm not smart. So if I constantly told myself that it, school was very challenging. However, if I stopped and actually looked around, I got A's. So I did get A's, but that wasn't good enough because I was holding on to my limited beliefs so tightly. And my identity was I'm not smart. So I didn't want to let it go, but I didn't think much of it because it was just a story that kept playing. My husband, it took him 10 years to convince me I was smart. Like it just took me a super long time to realize, no, I am smart, but I also had dyslexia happening and then had to figure out how to overcome that. And then now I am a reader. See, I always said, I never read books. I'm not a runner. If you see me running, I'm running from something and you should be running. Like these were the stories I told myself. And now I run. I read books all the time. Last year, I read 60 books, which is insane, insane. But I wanted to prove myself that I can read books and I'm smart. So circling back to what is holding you back from accomplishing success? So I want you guys to grab a pen and paper. I don't know if you guys are near one, but I'm just going to hold up my pen. If you guys can grab a pen and paper, I want to do an activity with you guys. And I'm just going to give you just a few seconds to grab a pen and paper. Maybe you have your laptop up and you can take notes. Great. I want to give you guys about four minutes, three or four minutes. And I want you to answer some questions. I want you to really dig deep. And some of these questions are probably going to take a little longer and you can come back to them. But I want you to be able to at least start thinking about these. So one of the questions is, what stories are you telling yourself? I know I already said that, but what does success look like for you? Did you define these stories that, are you define, that, that you're telling yourself or did somebody else suggest them or you're following by an example and you don't even know it? And it, and it might be personal. It might be from your childhood looking at your identity and who you are and what you cling to so heavily might be something that you should challenge and look at and see if it really is something you should be holding on to. So what, what's holding you back from growing your life or your business? Is there something that you're afraid? Maybe, I mean, I, at one point I was afraid of success and failure <laughs> if it's possible, but I was afraid of both going both ways. And I just wanted to be in the middle and not too far one way or the other, just to be in the middle. Do you really believe you can create your life by design? So any questions before I have you guys just take about three or four minutes to write? Okay. These, these are really powerful questions, by the way. Yes, that's why I said it. I, I, every Friday I take thinking time for myself and I go to a coffee shop. I put my ear pods on for thinking music and I bring the things that are most important to me. And if it's questions like this, I will answer them in complete silence and journal around it. So it might take another time, but I wanted to give you guys maybe just like three or four minutes just to go ahead and write. So, yeah, thank you. Of course.
As we wrap up, does anyone want to share maybe something that came out of one of these questions? That's okay if not, because these are very personal questions. I could actually, uh, oh, go ahead, Edith. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jelaine. You share. No, I didn't even get past the first question, but um, I, I, stories I'm telling myself are somehow that ri being rich is bad. Mm. Having mm. money is somehow bad or having a lot of money is bad. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, Am I even worthy of wealth? I question that. I have struggled with those as well. Have you, oh, and I hate to suggest a book that I, I think I have it at home. Um, and I really don't love the title of the book, but it's rich as the F, the F word. So. Um, that's the book. It's by, I think, Amanda something. It's, I read it. It asks a lot of really good questions. There's a lot that I journaled through that book, just as a suggestion. And, um, thank you. but yes, thank you for sharing because you're not alone in that. I have heard that over and over and over. So um, one of my stories is uh, people will think I'm weird if I'm completely authentically myself. Mm, that's good. Because mm. we want to be accepted. Right. <laughs> yeah. We all want to be belong and accept. And yes, thank you for sharing. That's, sure. Yeah. And then... Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I I did all three. Oh, good. No. Yeah. So um, the the what's holding me back? I did uh, fear of success, fear of being seen. Mm, yeah, that is good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't mean when I say good. It's just those are powerful answers because now the beautiful thing is is you're aware of it, and maybe you were aware of it, but you wrote it down, which I feel like takes it to another level. So then it's asking yourself, like, how can I look at this different? Right. Right. And then kind of, I think the power of acknowledging it, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Being I true to it. yourself and answering that. Yep. I love it. Thank yes, you. Yes, Kristen. I was going to say, um, in kind of in line with what Jelaine and Edith were sharing, I think for me, sometimes there's a fear of if I get too busy, which can also equal success. Can I handle it? <laughs> can I handle the stress? Can I handle managing everything that's going to be expected of me? Yeah. Yeah, that's good too. Yeah. All great answer guys. Thank you for sharing. And there are legitimate fears behind these and it's the way we look at it. And maybe it's, yeah, it's the way we've seen someone else go through something sometimes, or we've had a re interaction. Maybe Edith had something once with someone of being authentic. And then all of a sudden that backfired. I've had that happen. And, and I'm sure everyone has at some point and it's looking at, okay, how can you be true to yourself, Edith, and maybe protect yourself on some level, get to know them more before, you know, whatever it is, but taking a look and changing the story, you know? How could my money be be used for for good? Gary Keller talks about that all the time. He he's been financially set for a very long time, and he constantly says, "How can I help other people?" Like that's his goal. So, yeah, looking at it different and reading read read that book. Uh, hopefully, that helps. There's some really really powerful questions in that book. Again, I don't love the name of it. But there's some really powerful questions within the book that you will find that will help you um, journal through it. So, okay. So the seven areas of your life, I want you guys to, I know you have a pen and paper because we were just using it. I want you to draw one big giant circle. And then I want you to divide it into seven 
seven areas. As you can see on the screen, you can copy the screen if you want, you can even trace it off the screen. <laughs> and so the seven, the seven areas are your spiritual life. We're all gonna wonder why we were born here and why we were created, our physical health. We only have one body, are you taking care of it? Because where else are you going to live? Your key relationships, use this with your you know, significant other, your family, your friends, your coworkers, your personal life. These are the hobbies. These are the things that make you a better version of yourself. Your job, that's the specific role in the organization, even as a business owner. So if you have a role in the business, because everyone has a role in the business, that would be the job. The business is the one thing for the business you are a part of overall. And then finances, that's your wealth, that's your money, your legacy. So you have seven areas. I want you, I want to give you about, about three minutes you might be still drawing out and writing next to it. I want you to rate yourself on a, on a scale of one to 10. So one being not great and 10 being extraordinary and no judgment. We're just zooming out of your life and we're, and you're taking a look and getting like a snapshot of what the areas are looking for. Any questions before we dive in? Can you, can you distinguish again between business and job? Yes. So job, I know this is the biggest one. Everyone always asks me this question. So the job is the role in the organization. So as a business owner, you would have a role in the organization. Does that make sense? Yes, but then in terms of evaluating the business, how would you distinguish that from the job? So let's just say, and I don't know what you are, but let's just say you're on a team and you're maybe, let's just say you're the business owner. So if you're the business owner of the team, what's your one job? What's, what's the job in the business that you are doing and how is that going? So it might be like, okay, you're the rainmaker. You, you, you need to um, lead generate. You need to bring in leads. Maybe that's what it is. And, but the business is the overall business. It's, it's the goal for the entire organization of the business. Does that help? Yes, thank you. Okay. Okay, go ahead and if there's no other questions or you can just ask me, go ahead and just write again, rate yourself from one to 10, anywhere in there and the 10 being extraordinary and one being non-existent or not great. I think everyone looks about done. Does anyone need any more time? Okay. So I want you to look at that circle. Any, any surprises that come into play or maybe, you know, one, one area is not, you know, that you thought would be better or is the circle looking like a circle or maybe it's a flat tire. And there's, again, there's no judgment because we have different seasons in our life and that's okay. And by the way, when you do this exercise, if you do it six months from now or a year from now, I do this at least once a year, it looks different and it changes. It could be easily changed. Okay. 
I would challenge you to look at this. And like Gary was saying, your future self, what would it look like for your finances to be a 10? What would it look like for your key relationships right now in your life to look like a 10? Even though let's just say it's a four or maybe it's a six, that's okay. But what, is, what does it look like to be a 10 in that circle for each area? We're not going to do that now, but for the future, I would challenge you guys to do that because then if you're wanting to focus on a certain area, then you would know, okay, this looks like a 10 and I'm a six and I want to, I want to take it from a six to seven. Okay. Then what's the steps you work it backwards? You know, how can I, how can I grow that area? And I want you to start thinking about one area because we're going to do an activity and I want you to start thinking about one at one area of this circle that we're going to focus on. Okay. So balancing, the reason I put balancing up here instead of balanced would then indicate <laughs> that your life is balanced and we get to the spot that like you've accomplished it. it. It's just like working out. I wish I could say like, yep, I worked out. I worked out um, for two years. I'm good. I accomplished it. I'm exactly where I, where I want to be. And now I can just stop <laughs> and I've arrived. It doesn't stop. It's a constant thing. And so making sure you know where you are, and that's why we did the circle exercise, because sometimes your circle really, it might look like a triangle, it might look like a flat tire, and I don't want you to think my life needs to be a circle and it needs to be a 10 in all areas because our life is not perfect and nobody is doing that and that is okay because you are meant to focus on certain areas and some areas maybe aren't that important right now in your season and that's okay. So we're gonna take one and we want to build some leverage into that area. How can we take that area that maybe you want a better, like for example, personal life, like what is, what is something I can do in my personal life that I can get leverage on? So I, I put up a couple ideas because I want you guys to think of leverage. And, and I know I don't, I'm missing a ton here. So if there's some really powerful ones I'm missing, please let me know, shout them out. But here's a few examples for leverage. Because when I was selling property and it was, my husband wasn't in the business, it was just me. So currently right now it's me, my husband, and we have a virtual 20 hour assistant. And I've had her for the last seven years. Before him, it was just the two of us. And we were so, I don't know, it was like 2019, we sold 94 properties and I was running around like, like a chicken with no head, seriously. And I, I got a bunch of leverage on my business side, but I wasn't taking care of my personal side because I thought I could handle it all and I should do it all. And it just, you know, I'm a woman, I got this, you know? <laughs> so I was leveraging tons of people in my office. I was. I, I got a couple agents in my office and I said, here's the thing. I can't be in two places at one time anymore. And I only work four days a week because my daycare gave, gave me the greatest gift by telling me they don't have daycare on Wednesdays for me. They're full. So I had to figure it out. And, and it, it ended up being one of the best gifts because honestly, I then got super intentional with my time. I got super intentional and I figured it out. I worked four days a week and I met with agents and I had them look at something and I had it all typed up. And I said, look, if you show property for me, I'll pay you $25 a door and I will give you first rights to my open houses. I'll give you any leads that come in that I can't handle. And they thought it was a great arrangement. So that mindset, going back to mindset, I don't know of any agents that weren't working Wednesdays in my area. We also have tour on Wednesdays. I have never been to a tour, like a, an actual tour in my, on Wednesdays in Chico in my entire career. So, but there was so many stories that people are telling me, like, you can't be successful. I had a TL tell me one time, if you want to break your ceiling, you have to work more. I, I don't know if that was the best advice because I believe Again, this industry, they don't show you great examples. You need massive leverage. Gary says, if you want a massive life, you have to have massive leverage. 
that's where I think the missing piece is. And I was a control freak and I didn't want to let anything go. However, when you have like a C-section and you're told that you don't have daycare on Wednesdays, you have to get leverage and you figure it out. And those were really good gifts for me because it made me let go of a lot of things. So I even had my photographer drop off drop bys for me. And this is what you tell your clients because I had in my head going, who's going to work with me? My business isn't going to be successful. I had all these things hitting me. And I sat down at my buyer's consultation every time and I said, look, this market is moving fast. We want to get you in the house as soon as possible. I can't be two places at one time. So I have Joy here that is going to open the door for you. I'm going to pay her to open the door for you. You're still working with me, but I can't be in two places at one time. And we want to get you in a house as soon as possible. How does that sound? They were 100% good. I had to get really good with that script and I had to believe it. And the first time I said it and they were totally good, I was like, oh, it's better than I thought. Like all these fears and telling your client, I'm coming into town. I want to see property. I'm only here on Wednesday or I have a listing. I want a listing for on Wednesday. You get these, it's like almost like this butterflies in stomach going, how do I make it work? And it's like, no, you stick to what you said you're going to do. And you say, I have Tuesday at noon available, or I have Thursday at nine, or I have so-and-so that can open the door for you. It's just getting really good. But for me, mine was, yes, I probably could have found someone to take my daughter on Wednesdays. However, it really pushed me to get uncomfortable and to get leverage. So looking at this, sorry, that was a very long story. Looking at this leverage, what can you add? Because I am about to have you guys do an exercise of adding one personal and one business leverage in your life. So I want you to start thinking about this. And am I missing anything? Can anyone shout out anything that they have that needs to be on this list? Do you do all your own social media posts? No. Oh, no, I don't. I don't have that on there. That's a good one. Yes. I have an agent in my office that is a new agent and she actually does a bunch of clothing um, for Amazon. And she's, so I pay her, I think I pay her like $450 every month and she posts almost every day for me. So it's finding people and I find that finding people in the real estate business is super helpful because they know what you're talking about or a photographer or someone like that, like that you can easily hire. Okay. So now that we have this, I want you guys to get your pen and paper out again. I know lots of writing today. What leverage are you getting? And I want you to write two columns professional and I want you to do personal. So go ahead and write that. Alicia, are you mm -hmm. saying what leverage we currently have or what leverage we want to get? I'm sorry, to add. What okay. leverage okay. do you want to add? That's great that you have leverage, but we want to get more leverage <laughs> to get you more time at the end of the day. Yes. Once you've written it down, I want you to add a date by it. By when will you be getting that leverage? Might be six months, it might be a month. Maybe it's just, I need to text my 
babysitter for me. I'll give an example real fast. I had on my 411 that I wanted to do consistent date night with my husband and I, we were not hitting it. And it honestly, the struggle was I didn't want to ask his parents <laughs> every single week. And I thought he would do it and then he didn't. And then it got weird. And then it was like, okay, we're not having a date night. So then I said, never mind. I'm just going to hire a babysitter. So then I asked everyone in my office who has kids, teenagers that are responsible that can watch two kids. And then I figured that out and I text her and I got numbers and I text and I said, can you be at my house at 5.30 every Wednesday to 7.30? By doing that one text, like I figured out who had the kids. Then it was, okay, make that text. She said, yes. And does, do we hit it every time? No, but over the last two years, we've hit over 40 dates the last two years. And we've already had, I think 12 this year. So it might be something small that you can do by tomorrow. I'm going to get that number and I'm going to text it. Or it might be six months. I need to, you know, I need to interview different people, whatever that looks like. So just put a date next to it. And the last question is for this activity is why is this important to you? If you can't answer why this is important to you, then you most likely will not take action on it. So then it would be going back to what leverage should I be getting so that it will, what will be important to you or your family or to your business. Who would like to share any ahas that we've had so far, or maybe just about this activity? Anyone want to share what leverage they might be getting and why? I'll share. Um, hi, my name is Kirsten. I'm from the Keller Williams Carmel uh, Coastal Estates. Hi. Um, I, I jumped on late, so I missed the first portion. I came in just as you showed, uh, the one thing book mm -hmm. and that first, uh, slide. And then, um, I really like, I kept for the business side. I kept, uh, for a bookkeeper, I'm brand new agent. I got licensed back in um, August, but didn't join the office until March. So I'm literally brand new. Um, thank you. <laughs> uh, TC coordinator um, assistant. Those are my goals. Those mm -hmm. are my goals on personal housekeeper, cleaner, and cook. And those I would like by uh, uh, September of twenty three. So, um, yeah. Well, thank you for sharing Kirsten. Um, it took me a very long time to get a house cleaner. I don't know why. I'm one of those people when I stay at a hotel, I don't want them to come in and clean. I don't know why. So that is so great that you have it on yours. And yes, a cook, having someone come prepare some meals a couple times a week. I am in the process of finding one right now and I'm super excited. So thank you so much for sharing that. Anyone else? We'll take maybe one more. Promise I don't bite. <laughs> um, oh, that's actually I 
I'm, I'm thinking of um, potentially now that I'm an empty nester, I have a very big house with a lot of rooms. And I was thinking of getting an organizer to help me uh, potentially mm. clear out some of these spaces so I can at least consider if I wanted to rent out a room um, nice. in my house. Yes. Organizer. Oh, man. To go through your closet and to go through rooms. Thank you for sharing. Okay. So what are our priorities? We've talked about mindset. We've talked about our circle, the seven areas of our life. We've talking about leverage. Now what? Like, what should we be doing? Like, what are the activities that we should doing that is the top 20%? We talked about the top 20%, like, and making sure we know what they are. So let, I'm assuming we all know what they are. However, our life is chaotic. Things get thrown at us. Our email piles up so high that it's everyone else's. It's everyone else's to-do list and it shouldn't be ours. They're just waiting for a response on the other side. They're not. You just can ignore it. I'm being sarcastic, sorry. Um, <laughs> but it's, what is the most important thing? The path to getting everything you want is to get one thing at a time. And so this domino effect is it's like, you're thinking so big in your life. You want to get, okay, I want to get a house cleaner. I want to cook. I also want to get TC, you know, all these different things. Like what, what is it and why is it important? And it's like, okay, I want all these things. How can I only have one thing? The one thing tells you you should only have one thing. But if I have this and this and this and this, how can I only have one thing? We all have more than one thing, right? And we're being told if you chase more than two rabbits, do you get either of them? No. So it's about making sure you line up in priority what's the most important thing so that you can act in priority. It's about every day showing up and knowing what is the most important thing. Because when we have 101 things to do on our to-do list, I sometimes, I literally, if sometimes my husband's in the next door office, I'll literally go, I don't even know what to do. I don't know what to do. Because it's so overwhelming. It's like, there's so much chaos happening that I either, A, have to write a to-do list that I turn it into success list, which we're going to do. Or B, I literally go outside and go for a walk. Even though that's like, in your mind going, like, I don't have time for a walk. I don't have time. But it's like, just calm, just, just calm and get yourself centered what is the one thing that you have to do so the very powerful question I'm going to ask you is what's the one thing I can do such that by doing it will make everything easier and necessary and when you break this down it's what's the one the one thing not the two the hundred million things we have what's the one thing we can do today I can do and when I say I can do, it's not, I, I should do. That team's doing it. My TL told me to do this. Oh, I feel guilty if I don't do this. It's I can do, such that by doing it, you're gonna do it and you know you can do it and not making some goals so big that you're just setting yourself up to, to, to fail. Everything else is gonna become easier and you've earned the right to go to the second thing. So it's constantly, this, this question can be a guiding light in your life. It really can. I know that sounds crazy, but it really can. If you take it and just stop and think, what's the one thing you can do such that by doing it would make everything easier and necessary because that two inch domino that we figure out, you got to figure out what's your lead domino. What's the thing that would make it so easy to then accomplish all these other things. Because most of the time, as you can see, a two inch domino can actually knock over a three inch domino. Three inch domino can knock over a four and a half inch domino. And it keeps building. Scientifically, they've gone through this. If you get to the 57th domino, it reaches, it can reach all the way from the earth to the moon. But a lot of times I say, okay guys, let's figure out what's our lead domino. Most people go to number 18. It's the Leaning Tower of Pisa. If you've ever seen it in person, it truly is leaning. And you do those funny pictures, like you're going to push it down or you're holding it up or you're doing those crazy things. I did all of those things. 
in Italy, you're, you're looking at that and you're thinking, isn't it just gonna fall someday? And so then we think, okay, I got it. I'm going to lead generate for three hours a day, five days a week, and I'm going to do that. So that's our lead domino. Like that's what we think that that's what we should do. But the 18th domino isn't the one inch, like their two inch domino, the number one that we're supposed to be. We think too big still. We have to keep going so small that it almost feels like we're cheating. Like it has to be so, so small. So for example, maybe it's, if you're, if you're not doing lead generation, going from lead generation to zero hours to three hours a day, it's gonna be a shell shock and you might not know what you're gonna do. You're gonna break all your systems and that's okay. If you wanna do it that way, it's about being consistent though. How can we build a life that we're so consistent that we're not gonna burn ourselves out, that we're not gonna go, well, that wasn't, um, that was terrible. I don't never wanna do that again, but maybe that was the right thing but you went too hard at it. Maybe you're like, I'm gonna get up every day at 4.30, I'm gonna go to the gym, but we haven't been working out. So what's, what's the two inch domino? The two inch domino for working out might be, I'm just gonna sleep in my workout clothes or I'm gonna put my shoes out by my bed the night before so that when I get up, I'm going to get in my workout clothes and I'm gonna go to the gym or I'm gonna go for a walk. You start somewhere and you have to prove to yourself, you have to earn yourself the right and the stories and the trust you have to keep telling yourself, this is who I am. Or it might be, I'm just going to put five names out today. I'm going to write five names out on a piece of paper. And tomorrow I'm going to come in and I'm going to call those five people. Maybe that's your two inch domino. Cause is it, is it one thing you can do? That is one thing I know I could do. I'm just using this example. I've heard other people talk. Oh, I've heard people say, my one thing is I'm just going to look at my 411 before I look at my email because then what does it do? It stops you looking at your email. You're not, you're not looking at someone else's priority and you're looking at your goals and you're looking at what you're supposed to be doing that week. So maybe that's what it is. So I want you guys to get your pen out again. <laughs> We're gonna make a to-do list into a success list because we all get overwhelmed and not everything is equally important. Everything does not matter equally. So I want you to think of everything you have to do from today to like Saturday morning. I want you to just write out a piece of paper, like everything you think of. I have to get gas, show, show property, go on a listing appointment, get Easter eggs. <laughs> Guys, it's Easter this weekend. Candy, write it all down. I'm going to give you like two minutes. Now that you're writing your list, you've got your to-do list, I want you to go through and start at the top and ask yourself, is this something I should do or could do? Is this my top 20%? Because the top 20%, the things, and maybe we just talk about, you're going to have personal and you're going to have business, but it's right now when you get off the phone or off the phone if you get on zoom when you get on zoom like what's the number one thing you should be doing so 
find all the items and put a star next to one that are the top 20% that needs to get done immediately. So the eggs and the gas aren't going to be on there unless you're going to run out of gas on the way to your showing. <laughs> then maybe gas might be on there. So put a star next to all the ones that you should do. Now that you've got hopefully that done, I want you to ask yourself out of all these should do's, these top 20% with the stars next to it, ask yourself, what's the one thing that you can do such that by doing it would make everything easier and necessary? I want you to put a one next to it. Once you have the one, You've earned the right to then move on again. Say, now, what's the one thing? If I get that done, what's the one thing I can do? Such that by doing it, to make everything easier and necessary, you would put it too. This question can be used so much in your life. It could even be like, I'm preparing Easter dinner. What's the one thing I could do right now? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's just, you're making a success list because you're, you're weeding out all the noise and you're just narrowing down on what's my top 20%. What do I need to do Thursday? What do I need to do when I get off this class? And you're just breaking it down. Because if you don't do that, it's so easy to go, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to order those brochures. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a social media post. It's all these things that's like, oh, I love checking off boxes. And, and that's great. You check off boxes. But are we checking off the right ones? Because if we're focusing on just the easy ones, then at the end of the day, you have the big rocks that you haven't even dealt with that should have been the first things that you guys went after. Because if lead generations at the end of the day, I have found by the time the end of the day happens, you've lost your energy or something else pops up. So if you put it at the beginning of the day, if something happens, you can at least try to get it by the middle of the day. But by the end of the day, I find it's out the, it's out the door or I'm out the door. Before we move on, does anyone have any ahas, anything they wanna share that they've got out of the class so far? I love looking at what my success list is because then it doesn't feel so overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah, so this was a great exercise. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. Can I just ask, did anybody did anybody find something that like like did anybody feel that it 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 made a big impact too, like for me? <laughs> So okay. one thing I yep. So one thing I I'd like to share is is just a lot of aha moments for me just kind of listening in, and it's a matter of also taking into the impact that we're delivering to our clients. And I've been in a manager of employees before, and it just made me think with this this class and kind of going into the fact that. I've impacted them and they continue to reach out to me and thank me and ask me to be a reference, but I've never thought of myself having that impact in someone else's life. And I think it also makes me reflect and think about for our relationships, we're constantly trying to go out and get clients and get leads, but we're always chasing, if you will. And it kind of, if we just looked at it, well, I'm an asset to them. So they should want, you know, what I'm doing is helping them. If we kind of take that other reflection and the other way of looking at it, that's what this class has been able to do for me. So thank you. 
That's great. Thank you, Stephen, for sharing. So I'm going to take you guys through a visual, just like a visual exercise. I want you guys to all close your eyes. And you guys are see, usually when I do this in person, I tell everyone, like, no one's going to touch you. But see, you're in your own house or office, so you're good, safe. So I want you guys to just close your eyes. I'm going to give you two scenarios. And I just want you guys to take a deep breath in and then out. So imagine yourself, your alarm goes off and you hit snooze. Your alarm goes off again, you hit snooze. And then finally you get up, maybe after the third or fourth time, you realize you don't have time to do much. So you're running to the shower, you get dressed. The kids, you hear stirring already, there's kids out and about. You're trying to get lunches all together. You're, you're running out the door. You, you know you have to get to the office. You get to the office, you don't know who you're calling, you don't know what you're doing, you maybe forgot your own lunch, you're, you're, you're then getting on the phone going, I know what I need to lead generate, so I'm calling, you're texting some people, but you're not, you're not like flowing with people, you're not connecting because you're just kind of rushing from one to the other, or you have a showing, so you're going from a showing to a listing appointment, oh, I, then you look up and it's already five. And you didn't even realize it's five. So that you now need to go pick up the kids or get dinner. You're going to go through the drive through because you didn't prepare and you, you don't have anything, you know, you don't have anything at home. So you're rushing, your energy is super low. You didn't get your workout in the morning. You get the kids, you go home, you do the drive through you eat, go to a soccer game, you run home, and then you sit on the couch and it's like eight o'clock and you turn on the TV and you're just like, ugh. The day's over and we have still tomorrow is fr at least right it's tomorrow but we have one more day to get through okay so now imagine your alarm going off you turn it off you get up you get ready or you do a meditation you do a workout you get ready for the day you come out and it's still dark out there's nobody stirring you sit down you get to journal, read, sip your coffee or tea. This is a peaceful morning. Then you start making lunches or breakfast. Then you hear little footsteps. And so you get, you plan that all out. You know, maybe it doesn't, you know, the kids can affect your morning, but this one's going very smooth. Then you're dropping them off. You get to work. You have those five names out. You know exactly who you're going to call. You know which escrows you're going to, you know, look into what's missing. You have a showing at one o'clock and then a listing appointment at 2.30. So things are going really smooth. You look up and you're like, I've gotten so much done. It's our, you know, it's, it's 3.30 and I'm done for the day. I'm going to go get the kids, come home. I have a crock pot full of food. So we know we're good. We eat, we go, go for a walk or go to the soccer game. We come back and you still have energy. You're still enjoying the day and you sit down and you read. Now, you can open your eyes. Which morning have you had? Probably both, I'm going to say, for everyone. We've had that morning. I've had the morning where the kid doesn't want to wear any clothes or can't match or decided that they just don't want to wear pants that day and you're running late. But if you start your morning off right, it affects you less. I have, I was that agent that would get up at seven something and leave the house at eight, like in, out, but I was rushing through everything and I was pushing everyone. And that until I was a morning person, because I told myself I wasn't a morning person, until I became a morning person and I said I'm a morning person and started acting like a morning person. My mornings I have designed that they, they center me and they take me throughout the whole day. You don't necessarily, if you're not a morning person, you can still do this when you get up. You can do it in the middle of the day if your day isn't going well, but it's how do you center yourself so you're not rushing through, that you're not feeling stressed out, that you're going from one to the other because that stressed out feeling that you're late is gonna carry through the entire day and how you're interacting with your clients, how you're interacting with your team. 
I was reading a book. It's called uh, The Elimination of the Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. And it says in there, hurrying is not kind to anyone, to your family, to your friends, to your clients. And I was like, oh, that hurts. Because for me, efficiency is my number one core value. I love being super efficient and getting everything done. That's just me. So how can you guys have and create a morning routine or, you know, a, a routine to make sure you're not getting stressed out, that you're getting the things done? How can you be the person that is consistent on doing the activities that you're supposed to be doing every day? I have some great habits here. Or just some ideas. Um, if you haven't read the book, uh, Morning Miracle, The Morning Miracle for Real Estate Agents is a really good one. It talks about the savers, which talks about like silence and affirmations, visualization. Um, it goes over like the exercise. So good. If you want a morning routine or read about a morning routine, that's really good. This is one that's really, really good. And another one that's really good is called the 5 a.m. club. That doesn't mean you have to get up at 5 a.m. I read the book and I did not get up at 5 a.m. <laughs> I get up freakishly early a couple days a week. And then other days I don't give up, get up as early. So these are really good books, the 5 a.m. It's by Robin. And then, um, so the ruthless elimination of hurry. If you are like me and super efficient and want to be super efficient, this is another one that I read and it's really good. So looking at this, creating great habits, it takes about 66 days to create, a, you know, to build a habit. And I'm sure you've heard of the 66 day challenge that they, the one thing does and KW does. That's a really good one to build a great habit. And I know I have so many books. Sorry. I'm super, I love books. So, um, atomic habits. If you want to build habits, this book, I've read it multiple times. James clear is so brilliant. You can even just follow him on Facebook and he puts things out there all the time. He is so good about just talking about for example, he wasn't flossing in one way. It's like, what's that easy little thing that I can do with habit stacking? So you brush your teeth in the morning. So in the morning, he would take his, um, his pick to floss and he would put it, and maybe I'm saying this wrong, it was in a drawer and he moved it and he put it on top of his toothbrush. So when he came home, like he knew he was going to floss. It's right on there. That small little habit that he did of just, Again, that's a two inch domino, that small little thing of just switching it. He then has become a flosser. Like <laughs> he flosses all the time religiously. Mine, like I said, I use the, the date night one. So what's here that you guys can do that can you can build the habit? So we've talked about leverage and we've talked about like different things that you can do. So what on here can you add and maybe it was one of the things that you were focused on in one of the areas of your life. How can you make it a habit? If it's that truly important to you, why not create a 66 day habit around it? And here's the caveat I'm gonna say. Most people think that if you go on this journey, it feels really restricted. It feels like, I don't, I, I, I don't like doing this. I had this conversation with my husband last night, actually. His thing with the six six day challenge was he goes, but I, I don't feel like I can be flexible. And maybe I, maybe I don't want to do it one day because I'm uh, we're on vacation or something. That's okay. If you're creating a habit around work, I work four days a week. I'm going to do those habits every day I'm working. So if I'm putting out five names the night before, I'm not putting out five names on a Saturday night, right? So it's making sure you understand that you would then count 66 days of just those days. If you missed one of them that landed on a Monday, then you'd put an extra, you don't have to start over. It's okay to miss one. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just making sure you're acting in, in priority, making sure that you're building this. 
Because at the end of this, you want to feel, if you missed it, let's just say you missed something, you want to, it almost feels off. Like you feel off. Like, oh, I didn't, I didn't meditate. I didn't read. I didn't pray. Whatever it was. I didn't journal. I didn't go on an exercise. I didn't go for a walk. It feels weird. That's you building a habit. It doesn't have to look like perfection. Drinking water would be something you would do or making sure you get seven hours of sleep every day. That is something you can do every day. But if you're picking something that's not, then you, I hope that makes sense. You would just do it on the day. So looking at this list, I would love to hear from you guys. What habit are you wanting to create and maybe is it that two inch domino? Or maybe you guys have something in your mind that you wanna do, but maybe it's the 10 inch domino or maybe it's the 10th domino or maybe it's the 18th domino. I would love to help you get to that two inch domino. So would anyone be willing, if you have any questions or help getting to a two inch domino, I would love to help. You can unmute yourself or put it in the chat. I know it's lunchtime. We're almost there. Yes. Alicia, hi, it's Jelena. It's Jelena again. Um, what you said about the lead generation habit, mm -hmm. I think I've always, I mean, that's always been the, the number one domino, but I never looked at it as that it's, it's an, what did you say? A 10 inch domino, not a, not a one inch. Yes. So if, if you're, well, it depends on what is your goal or what the activity is. So if you're saying three hours a day, so give me an example of that. And I can say where probably roughly is landing. Well, even I, I like how you reframed it, that preparing five people to call that day the night before or you know sometime during that preparation phase and then doing it i think creating the habit of lead generation is probably my lead domino but it doesn't have to be that three hour call 20 people a day it's a muscle and it's something you have to build so a lot of these things on here i didn't just have overnight i added them one by one creating habits i didn't just all of a sudden Yep, I'm going to I'm going to run 3 miles see you later like I, I you have to build the muscle. Um and meditation is a muscle you have to build to sit silently, quietly, like mm -hmm. I, I had the hardest time doing that. So yes, I think it's a great thing and a lot of times uh, these habits it's not the actual doing it that day. It's usually if you're creating the habit, it's something you're doing ahead of time. It's the preparation that then will get you there. Because if it's like, I want to lose weight. Okay. It's well, what about that? Well, I'm going to work out Friday. Okay. Well, are you okay? That's great. And like, it, it might then become back really down to after we get it down to the to the one number one domino, the two inch, it's did you prepare your shopping list that will support you losing the weight? Like it's just writing out what meals you're going to have or something. Does that make sense? Let me go off to you. Yes. Okay. So, so yes, lead, lead generation is, we're in this real estate business. It's, it's, it's having conversations and that is super important. So doing three hours i'm not saying that you guys should never do three hours i'm not saying that i don't want you to go to your coach or your tl or anyone saying that what i'm saying is if you don't have the habit at all this is a way to start the habit and it's an and it has to feel so easy or you're not going to stick to it and you're not going to be consistent because cons consistency in this business is key and that's what you want to do so maybe you're early generating maybe it's 30 minutes for the whole week, or maybe it's an hour for the whole week. So maybe it's, I'm gonna do 10. Maybe I'm gonna do, or I, I used to do, when I first got the lead gen, I wrote two cards. I made five phone calls and I, and I think it was like five, I tried to like either text 
or Facebook or comment on five things. So it was like five, five, and two. And I knew it was something I could do. So I committed to that. It's starting somewhere and then building from there. Because once you build that muscle and you know you can run three miles, then you're probably going to be able to take it up to four to five. And you're just going to keep raising it. But start somewhere that you will be able to be consistent and sustain it. Thank you. I think this is such a great list. And I have so many things on here that I want to like create the habit for like working out, getting up early, drinking water, no screen time before bed. I know that I'm working on sleeping seven hours a night solid. So mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I love that you put lead gen as a habit. Well, it's a habit. Yeah. Because right? I mean, I, I think it's a habit because it feels awful <laughs> at the beginning. And so it's it's creating the habit, but it's also that self-talk. So yes, I, th I think Legion is a habit. Yeah, and I love putting it, I love that you put it in that perspective because, you know, so often we look at lead gen as like, oh, this is a time blocking thing. This is a task. This is something that, you know, it's my one thing, right? Mm -hmm. But it's like putting it into a habit kind of like brings it into more reality and, and a great perspective. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Sleep is a big one, especially with wellness. Getting enough sleep is super important. And a lot of times when I hear people say like, oh, I just want to get more sleep. I, I'm, I have no energy by the end of the day. A lot of times, again, it's starting way earlier. It's no screen time, no, no, you know, lights because that keeps you up. And it, it might just be like, I'm going to stop the screen time. I'm going to turn everything off at eight o'clock or nine o'clock and give myself like whatever that is. I used to stay up until midnight every night. And now I don't because, and I kept telling myself, I have somnia. I just sleep. I just, I just can't do it. I think it's been three years. I do sleep meditation at night. Every night I pray, I lay in bed. Well, actually it starts before that. Like I make sure I'm in bed by like nine between nine nine thirty I want to be in bed and I haven't had any screen time or very little screen time if I look at my phone or whatever a whole hour before that so it starts like earlier but to get to that it took me a long time and I kept telling myself oh I, I'm a night owl this is who I am like and that's great but when you have your alarm set for 3 55 like I said I get up freakishly early on Fridays and Mondays because I go to Orange Theory at 4 30. So that will help you again i put really big barriers in my life to make sure i'm accountable like my son does not have after school program and i have to pick him up by two o'clock every day now so it makes me leave the office i leave the office by two o'clock and i'm only working four days a week so you just keep putting barriers and getting uncomfortable with them and yes do i do I take a phone call at night or do I do? Yes, I, of course I do. And when my kids were sleeping at nap time, I would get on my computer and I'd email if I wasn't taking a nap <laughs> with them. But it's just like, you have different seasons of your life and that's okay. I have an agent that loves working at night. That's great. So how can you make sure you're balanced with your whole life? How can you are balancing like your family life? Or maybe you don't have kids. That's fine. You're your sniffing at other, I'm sure wants to spend time with you or your kids if they come to town. So what does that look like to you? So it's creating great habits and putting it on a four in one. I am a very strong believer in four on one. If you don't have a four on one, it's not basically a math equation. It's a relationship is what I would challenge you to think of this form. I saw it very as a transactional thing and I broke it down mathematically when I first started using it. And that's not how it's meant to be used. I'd be like, okay, I want to sell 50 homes. So then, okay, every month I have to sell this much. That means I have to, you know, like go on this many appointments and that's what we did. So I'm like, okay, three appointments every month or four points. That's not having a relationship with it. Having, having a relationship, especially having a personal site, I find is very, very helpful. It's like, why do I want to do that? Why am I want to sell that many properties? Well, this year we're going to Europe for 33 days. So it's like, okay, we want to fund our life by doing this. So this is going to make us to get to this. 
uh, you can download this form actually at the one thing. Um, if you go to the one thing, there, the, there's that, but there's also um, my KW. I think there's a form. Edith, do you know if it's my KW or is it? Um, it's like the one thing, and I know it used to be called like Productivity Warrior. Yes. Well, it's pro productivity. Yes. I'll, I'll find it while you talk. Okay. I was going to say, it's also, I'm pretty sure, in like the back end of command somewhere too. Like, I'm pretty sure they have all these forms, but also the one thing um, definitely has this. So basically, having a relationship, breaking it down and not making it equal is, is very important because it, Gary will say, would you rather be winning or losing at halftime? Well, winning. So if you take it and divide it mathematically, it doesn't make sense. And you have to pull out a calendar for the whole year to make sure that you're going to act in priority. So if you say like, oh yeah, I'm going to I'm going to lead generate this many hours and you look at it. And honestly, I've looked at it some months and I'm like, oh, I'm only in the office 10 days. Okay. So if I'm only going to be in the office 10 days, like look at the whole year, because there's going to be some months that aren't going to make sense. So definitely, oh, Carlos, I think got it. Maybe there's a spreadsheet. Uh, if you did, thank you. If you don't have a 401, there's a 12 week year. There, that's a book as well, but a 12 week year basically takes your one goal, breaks it down into four parts. And, and then you have one week after every quarter to reflect on building it. And it's kind of cool because you also can break it into three sections. So for me, I've broken it down like God, family, business. I've broken it down versus um, business, family, and me, because I want to make sure I'm pouring it into myself, myself as well. And so it was like exercising and doing different things like that. Another great accountability is having a mentor or coach. So those are super important. I'm going to, there's no questions. I'm going to dive in. We only have a few minutes left. So I'm going to dive in a little about wellness. No one has any questions. Or ahas about anything we've talked about. You can always interrupt me. Here's a, um, basically it's a link tree to KW Wellness. It's our new community within KW. If you haven't heard about it, we have seven pillars. We focus on the first three are the most important ones that we focus on, which is your physical, your mental, and your emotional. In this business, we know we're running ragged. We know it's, we have, there's a lot of emotions. We also focus on social, spiritual, environmental and occupational. If you go ahead and scan this, it will take you, there's a bunch of resources there. You can also join um, our Facebook group our, and we have um, a YouTube channel. We have three, three ways of joining. And so you guys, anyone can join for free. We wanna make sure we're a great resource. Every month we come in with an initiative. Last month was about nutrition, this month, is basically about stress awareness in April. And then next month is mental awareness, which we're going to be doing a really awesome fundraiser that we're partnering up with Peace Love. And we're gonna do this really great activity online about like dealing with mental stress through art. And it's gonna be a really fun thing that we're gonna be doing it. And then uh, June, we're doing a yoga retreat um, August, we have a leadership that we're going to, um, uh, event that we're going to be doing at mega camp. So if you are interested, you can reach out to me, but we are, there is three options. You can join for free. And then the plus one is for agents. And basically you get different things. You get invited to the events. We have learning series. We have masterminds that we do. We even have a platform called, uh, well beats. And there's basically, there's really cool um, videos around nutrition. We also have workouts. So lots of different workouts and meditation. And so we offer that to you and four other family members. So it's a really, really awesome thing that we're doing. And we're super excited. And underneath KW Wellness is KW Clarity. 
is a sobriety group and that's completely free and it's a private event, uh, a private Facebook. If you are interested, I can connect you with Shelly. She started it and it's, um, it's growing really fast and it's so great to see. So we're going to end a little early. Uh, I think we have like another four minutes, but any questions, um, you guys can reach out to me. I'm in Northern California, Chico area. If you have any referrals, would love to work with them. And, um, or if you have questions about some of the slides I have, I also get the question sometimes is like, well, who do you work with? I work with people that know me, like me and trust me. That's really what I focus on. And um, a lot of sphere and referrals from past clients and agents. So that's, that's my source. And we really focus on that with like five events two drop bys, we do monthly newsletters. So I even have a touch program that I can share with everyone if they're interested. So thank you so much for having me, Edith. Oh, I'm so thankful that you were here, Alicia. You've been amazing. The information that you're sharing with us and um, you know, just the whole thought of what you've been talking about, it just, it really was a mind shift for me. So does anybody have any um, questions or feedback or an aha that you want to share with Alicia? She took time out of her very busy schedule to be here. So I'd love to give her some love before she left. Morella says, thanks, Alicia. Yep. Great book suggestions. Thank You're you. welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much. You've been grateful, and uh, I'm very grateful to you. Thank you. Oh, I'm happy that you're here, Carlos. Thank you. I really enjoy my three core values are efficiency, balance, and impact. So I love doing this, and I tell myself if just one person gets something good out of this and knows that they don't have to work themselves to death, then I've done my job. Great. You did your job. Yeah, thanks, Carlos. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everybody. There's some notes in the um, chat, Alicia. And thank you again for really being here. And um, I'm loving it. So yeah, yeah. I'll send you. I'll send you a. Um, if you want, I can send you the slides if you're interested. If you want to pass it on to someone, because I know there was a few people that came on late, and I can also include my 2023 touches that we're doing for our clients that we've built up to where we're at now before we used to just do a few and we we keep adding every year. Yeah, if you could share that with me, that'd be great. And I'll make sure yep. everyone gets out. And then also, if anybody wants to join the, K, um, the KW Wellness Facebook group, just let me know and I can invite you into it. All right. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank Edith. you. All right. Bye, Alicia. Enjoy your four days and three days off. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Have a beautiful day. Thank you, Edith. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, you. Thank you, Edith. Now I'm You're in your welcome. group. Okay? Bye. What? Now I'm going to be uh, listening to you for now. <laughs> That's right. All I right. Um.